Welcome to another edition of Inside ULM Athletics with Athletic Director Scott McDonald. I'm Mike Hammett, and uh, this time just one-on-one with Scott here as we wrap up the semester. I mean, we're, we're through everything, graduation this last weekend, and now to the break. Basketball players get a few weeks to just play basketball here and maybe get away to see their families for a few days over Christmas, but... I think it's a great time because, like you say, like I said, you know, we just came off graduation. It's great to see some of those athletes, the yeah. student athletes, graduate, get those degrees. Some of them will still compete here uh, this spring, maybe even next year yet. But great to see uh, the success that the student athletes have and celebrate that this past weekend. It's been an exciting fall, Mike. I, I think um, uh, this break has come in, in, the, in the campus all of a sudden. You know, after last Friday. There's parking spots available, and there's nobody walking around. It's it's a, it's a unique environment. It's my first experience with that. But uh, what an exciting fall we had, you know. And, and we talked about uh, all during the fall, our football team, of course, reaching bowl eligibility for the first, uh, fifth time uh, since we've been in FBS. And uh, so the six wins as we continue to progress uh, as a program, um, you know, fighting up until that last week or two, uh, not only to get into the conference championship game, but, but to get in, you know, position ourselves better for a bowl game. Unfortunately, this year uh, there were more bowl eligible teams than there, than there were slots. But uh, what a huge step forward our, our football program has taken as, as, as they um, uh, continue that march uh, toward getting us where we want to be, which is which is a conference championship. Uh, our women's volleyball team had a tremendous season. Um, you know, far surpassing, more than doubling the win total uh, from from last year. Had uh, big wins in state over ULL, swept uh, ULL in three games, and then um, you know went over to Rust and, and beat Louisiana Tech, and so had some really, really um, uh, saw a lot of improvement with with that program, and really excited about about the future there uh, as well. And um, you know, you've heard. Um, uh, Coach Richard talk about how excited he is about his basketball team and what he expects out of that team. Our women's basketball team right now on a five-game win streak. I know you've been following that very closely as you work uh, with our women's basketball team on the broadcast side, and, and and so it's it's a very exciting time, you know, to get through this fall, see our teams continue to progress, and uh, have some success both on the field and in the classroom. I think uh, before we move on, I know we want to touch on some facility stuff. I wanted to ask you, too, about football real quick because of the disappointment. You you get to the six wins, you don't go bowling. Just kind of take us through that process, if you could, real quick about – what was going on? Because I know that, that you and, and Commissioner Carl Benson were working hard trying to find a spot, and it, it's just it's tough in a year where there's more bowl eligible teams than there are bowl spots available. Well, again, I appreciate Commissioner Carl Benson's help. It was it was my initial um, venture into you know this this bowl situation and, and and the calls you get and, and the things you're trying to do. And um, you know it comes down to this: that the Sun Belt Conference has five affiliated bowl tie-ins, right? And we had six bowl eligible teams, and um, the five teams uh, ahead of us all had had better records. Um, we were at six and six. ULL was at seven and five at the end of that that last regular se- season um, weekend. So then it becomes a, an effort on everybody's part to get um, this sixth team, which would be us, into a bowl. So working with the commissioner, working with uh, different scenarios, working with ESPN and the folks there. Uh, trying to find, is there going to be an at-large um, slot available to us? Um, a lot of the the uh, conferences have what's referred to as backup agreements. So um, they go to a bowl and say, hey, listen, if you have an open slot, we want to be your next at-large. We want to get our at-large teams in. Uh, we didn't happen to have any of those uh, agreements with any bowls uh, this year. And, and so they get certainly preference um, at, at any at-large spots before we get a chance. And then we needed a couple of scenarios to play out that last Saturday, um, starting with uh, Virginia Tech, who played Marshall. Virginia Tech did a nice job of, of winning down the stretch. They beat Virginia in overtime, which set them up to, to get bowl eligible on the, that last weekend by playing Marshall, and, and they did. And that took a, took a slot, you know, um, that we weren't counting on necessarily, say, a week or two ago. And um, so we worked really hard, tried to get ourselves in the, in the best possible position. But at the end, uh, you know, us, Miami of Ohio, uh, Southern Miss, and University of Wyoming all were, were left standing when the music stopped. 
Well, a, a great season, like you mentioned, to get to six wins. The progress continues there for football, continues across all our sports. And speaking of progress, going back to the first time you did one of these, you, you talked about facilities and the growth we have going on here at ULM. Uh, a lot of those, uh, Brown Stadium, the softball, uh, we'll kind of go one by one through what's going on. Let's start with Brown Stadium because that's a completed project now and certainly has to be exciting for a home for track and, and soccer and, and those sports. Yeah, really excited about how that's turned out, Mike. Uh, you know, the first phase of that was getting that track ready and prepared, and, and really that's the first major redo of that track gosh, since since maybe I was here back in the late 70s, early 80s. And, you know, there'd been some resurfacing and things, but really to go and, and do it right. Uh, and then the uh, building of the soccer field inside uh, that track. So uh, they all have lights. They can play at night, you know, from a practice standpoint, you know, during the heat, maybe get off the field during the day and, and have, um, um, you know, a little cooler temperature to, to, to practice. Getting them in a, a dressing facility, they've had to just make do in terms of offices and dressing facilities, track, cross country, and 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 soccer. They'll have you know the uh, facilities they deserve inside. So you know the the facility itself being uh, redone to accommodate um, uh, those student athletes. And then you know what doesn't go overlooked. And I've even had a lot of people remark you know that parking lot, Brown Stadium parking lot, had been patched and band aided for so long. And, and to go in and really do it right, Amethyst Construction came in, did a tremendous job, got it completed ahead of their schedule. So we were so concerned as we started that project in the summer that it wouldn't be ready for that first football game. They completed ahead of schedule and did a tremendous job. And so no longer when you go across that parking lot did you have to look for potholes or, you know, uh, you know big bumps in the road, so to speak. So we're really proud of what, how Brown Stadium has turned out as those teams move into those dressing rooms and coaches move into those office complexes there at Brown. Uh, softball, you mentioned, we're um, well into the first phase of a three-phase uh, project to get those facilities upgraded. Right now, we're finished uh, or finishing uh, the players' lounge uh, there. Um, and we also have, <coughs> excuse me, a four-bay uh, hitting facility that will be covered. Uh, we, <coughs> excuse me, Hope to have that done um, uh, before uh, the <clears throat> end of January or first of February. Excuse me, just a second. So we we hope to um, have that done by the <clears throat> end of January, early February. So that'll be ready for their season. Uh, the padded walls that we've added at, at women's softball. So you know, certainly facility upgrades there. Um, the 21st of December, we hope to have our training room uh, underneath Malone. Uh, finished, and we'll be able to start to move in there. So by when the student athletes return in January, those that are coming back in January, they'll be able to utilize the new training room. But that's exciting. I know a lot of folks have been looking forward to that one. Softball too, a new coach in Molly Fickner this fall, and the upgrades of the facilities. There's some excitement around that program, and and now more changes to campus as we move forward too. And if you come by, of course, the Grove for the the, the game against uh, Lafayette was busy once again, but now there's a big fence around it and uh, getting ready for some construction in that area too as the the new medical school gets ready to go in. Well, the medical school has, has uh, broken ground and actually construction is ongoing right now. It's tremendous to see what's happening there. Um, they've started to move equipment over into the traditional grove as they get that prepared uh, to go in and 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 pave that and, and make that into a, a really nice area that we'll still continue to be able to utilize uh, on game days. Um, I, I, you know, we're going to be uh, moving forward with our plans. We've we've met with different groups. We've gotten feedback on the uh, tailgating experience and that fan experience. So we'll be moving forward, moving um, more spots into the Pecan Grove, which is just adjacent uh, to the um, the traditional Grove. And then we're also building uh, for our RV folks um, uh, an area where we can run electricity and water. Uh, out to their RVs uh, behind the uh, east side stands. So just, you know, really excited about that and, and how that's going to turn out. Uh, looking at putting in perhaps some restroom facilities, the permanent restroom facilities, and things like that to enhance people who come and tailgate. 
uh, not only for football, but we think it'll also serve uh, baseball and softball, ex- particularly from the RV situation where people want to bring their RVs in. We'll have slots for them. And then also we have a l- number of teams who come into University Park. In fact, almost 100,000 visitors last year to University Park utilizing those fields in the back. And, and they also are bringing their RVs and, and, and that sort of thing with their kids. We think there's some, some revenue opportunities there as well. Uh, exciting to see that and I know uh, you've discussed too some possible housing situations too and some upgrades to help our student athletes as well well you know Mike when we first started uh, this series of of videos I talked to to the community about uh, some of the initiatives we have and and priorities we have and one of those uh, was a housing you mentioned uh, and we we continue to move forward uh, very quickly on a new new housing solution that'll be on campus uh, that'll relieve some of the housing um, pressure that we have right now. You know, we're almost a hundred percent in terms of of our dorms uh, vacancy. So we're going to um, be looking to to build some new housing. Uh, certainly, that's going to benefit our student athletes in terms of location and and having you know available more beds on campus uh, for all of our students, but including our student athletes. We also continue to work very hard raising money to enhance uh, our nutritional programs for our student athletes. I think that's very important, you know, how we feed them, how we house them, certainly. And then uh, our partnership with with VCOM, uh, the VIA College of Osteopathic Medicine, and that sports medicine component that they're going to bring um, to our university for our student athletes. And it'll um, we, we've seen it in practice at, at Virginia Tech just blew us away when we had a chance to go up there and visit with those folks and what it's done uh, for their student athletes and for their program at Virginia Tech. They're actually going to use a similar program down here with our student athletes. Uh, it's it's going to be um, it, it will just provide resources that we haven't had available to us. Our training staff, who does a tremendous job now, will have more resources to call on and and help our student athletes um, not only on the field but if they get strep throat if they get a you know if they get a cold or whatever you know we'll have um, uh, people on board there uh, that'll be able to help help them immediately and we're really excited about that it's exciting to to see all the progress happening and everything that's on the way here at ulm and speaking of on the way we're here at the semester break we kind of took a look back at the fall we've got exciting things coming up in the spring uh, mentioned Molly Fickner taking over for softball. I think well, there's a lot of excitement, I think, about what uh, Coach Federico is building in baseball and, and some of the new recruits he's brought in. I know he's feeling pretty good after the fall. And, uh, of course, you got track this spring, too. And uh, we've got the rest of basketball season. Yeah, we still have some games here over the break, too, that I know uh, there's some tickets on sale, some special packages for that. So if you're looking into that, uh, ulmwarhawks.com and get some more information. But, Boy, it's exciting because we've got a lot of great things coming up here still for the rest of the year. Yeah, we have holiday packs uh, for both our men and women's programs in basketball. And we we also um, um, working on some packages for our baseball team and our softball team. We'll um, we'll be charging admission in softball this year, and we think uh, the response to that has been tremendous. We're looking at some premium seating area right now for softball. Um, I just left the baseball field meeting with Coach Federico on some field improvements he's looking at as well. He's very excited about what he has. Just had both softball and baseball just had big recruiting years and early signing dates, uh, as did basketball. So uh, it won't slow down once we get back in January. Of course, over the holidays with both men's and women's basketball games here um, at um, Fant Ewing Coliseum. So we invite everybody out. Take advantage of those holiday packs. We have a lot of other different promotions going on, including, you know, toy drives and that sort of thing. So I uh, hope people will go to ulm.edu, look at our athletics um, page, and and take advantage of what we are offering. Well, it's an exciting time, Scott. Uh, thank you, and uh, have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and uh, we'll get back at it here in January. Well, Merry Christmas to you and your family and to all the Warhawk community out there. Um, we're excited about what's going to happen here. We're really excited about the future.